Well, hello everyone and welcome in. Feel free if you wanna drop in the Q&A where you're from and if you already own the Glowforge Aura or you're thinking about getting one. Um, this is our third, I think our third Glowforge Aura class and we I'm doing it a little bit differently. I've got the Glowforge Aura on my workstation today because I thought it might be helpful to go through the features of the Glowforge Aura and maybe answer some questions either if you're thinking about getting one or you just got one and you're wondering, want more information about what it does. So um, the Glowforge Aura is a laser cutter. So it uses a laser, a fine point laser to cut hundreds of different materials. Um, it is, uh, it comes in about 20 pounds. So it's very light, which makes it super great um, to put it, keep it on a desktop or some, you know, some, some area in your craft space or in your home. It is really the first laser cutter that is for crafters. Um, the larger later laser cutters are more industrial and they require a more industrial setting. Whereas the Glowforge Aura is really designed for crafters. And whether you're using it for yourself or for a side hustle, um, it's the perfect addition to your craft space. So like I said, it is super light. It's probably about 20, Five, 20, 25 pounds. I move it around all the time, like depending on where I'm, where I am. Um, I can take it outside. I can throw it in my car and take it to a friend's house. And um, it just, I love the portability of it. Um, so it's about 20 inches by 20 inches. Maybe it's not quite 24 inches as a footprint. So it's about 20 inches by 20 inches. Um, it has on the back here, it has an air filter that will um, filter out to direct to a window. If I just actually got my window filter installed um, and it's the same type of filter that you would use for a, a dryer. So you just need a like four inch hole and um, something to block off the air. So the air that you're spreading out doesn't come back in. You can also use the Glowforge filter, which I have here. It's a little bit big to pull up on my workspace. Um, the Glowforge filter um, works it indoors. So if you have, if you're taking this to a craft market or something like that, where you won't have the ability to use the um, filter vent through a window, you can use the filter here. The filter is a little bit loud for my workshop, so I I actually don't use it during the workshops because so I can keep talking to you all and you don't hear just the filter. Um, when you get your machine out of the out of the packaging, you'll set up the um, laser head. So the laser head is right here and it works on, let me, let me see, I gotta just make sure I'm looking at you guys that can see what I'm doing. Okay, so this is the laser head and it's a little box and it, magnetically clamps onto the um your bars here and your bars work on an x and y axis so they run x and y um on the on the tray now it's magnetic it's got a little um the laser head is right inside there and it has this gray cord this it looks like um to me not you know not to like an average person me um, it looks like it's just electric tape um, on the back of it, like duct tape, shiny duct tape. But that's actually what powers your the head of the laser. In the top of your lid, it has a camera. And when you close your the lid down, the camera basically takes a scan picture of the, the crumb tray. So inside the laser, you have about a 12 inch by 12 inch space to work with. And if I can, at the end of class, kind of move this over so my overhead camera can give you the, the overhead look on it, I'll do that. Um, but you have like this little crumb tray. Let me pull it out. This is what the crumb tray looks like. I have my paper in there but it's like this and it's got little holes in it. So things, small pieces will fall through and um, it just fits right in. And, and this is about your cutting space. So your crumb tray where the honeycombs are is about your cutting space. And 
I say it's about a 12 by 12 space. A little smidgy bit bigger, but not, not much. If you are looking to cut something um, that will fit into the Glowforge, you want to keep it about 12 by 12. That's about the biggest you want to go for. Um, to clean it, I keep... Uh, I'll vacuum out any dust and debris and you have, you'll have like little tiny specks of dirt inside. So you can just um, wipe those out or use a vacuum and vacuum those out. And then your crumb tray will get marks on it. So like when I use wood, the, the burn marks, if you will, the residue marks um, appear a little bit more than if I'm cutting with paper or something like that. So I can just use a Lysol wipe, um, Magic Clean, and just kind of clean this off and keep, you wanna keep your um, crumb tray clean and your rails. So let me put this back in. I would normally do this in from the front of the machine. So that slides back in there. So there's these rails here and there's two rails. You can only see one, but there's two rails. And I just, you can take an alcohol wipe and wipe those down about every 10 pieces you cut. So, you know, keeping your, the inside of the cutter clean is super helpful. Um, when you close the top, the camera lens will register the material that you have inside. And if you're using some of the, um, I left my material over on the other side. If you're using, oh, here. If you're using the Glowforge proof grade material, it will register the QR code. The camera here will register that QR code. So it sends the settings right to the software. Um, and it says, okay, this is the material you're cutting with. This is the shape of the material. And then it will cut that material up using the Glowforge proof grade setting. So the materials that have the QR code and are proof grade ready, those are the materials that um, Glowforge has done the settings for. So you know when you're cutting that type of material, it's the tried and true, it's tested. As a beginner, I would recommend starting off with the proof grade materials and then expand out with trial and error when you're ready. If you want to use larger materials, you have side doors on each side of the tray that allow, it's called a pass-through door, and it allows for materials that are 12 by 24 inches. Um, so you can cut bigger items. It can't cut wider than 12, but you can cut you know, longer than 12. So you can have a board that's 12 inches by 36 inches or 48 inches. And in the software, you would just move the board forward and make sure that your um, image is realigned to work. Now, you may at first be looking around like, where's the on off switch? How do I turn this machine on? How do I turn it off? When it's plugged in and you open the door, that's what turns it off. And it will automatically turn, I mean, I'm sorry, you open the door and that's what turns it on. It will automatically turn off after I think about 20 minutes of not being used. So you can choose to just unplug it from the wall or let it naturally turn off if you want to. Once you've sent your image to be engraved or cut or scored, um, there's a little button up here that will flash for us and it will tell me, okay, I'm ready to cut. And so then you'll be, um, you'll be ready to cut at that point. One other thing to point out is that for safety, this is completely enclosed. So there's nothing exposed outside of the machine that could harm you um, if you're walking by or something like that. Um, there are sensors in the lids. So when you open the lid, if you're mid cut, it will stop working. If it were to get bumped, um, somebody walks by it and bumps it, it will stop working. So it's really designed um, for with safety in mind, which I, I really appreciate that that's it. Um, so I think that's everything. I'm just checking my notes. <laughs> I wanna make sure I didn't forget anything I wanted to tell you guys. Um, it is a, when I, I'm, I'm learning about laser printers. Um, so one thing about this laser printer is it is a diode printer or diode laser, not printer, it's a diode laser, which means the power of the laser is that for this one, it's six watts. If you are doing like the Glowforge Pro or you're in 
you know, an industrial type of situation, you're going to have a, a laser that has much more power to it, which means you can cut a larger variety of materials. For the crafter, this does so many different materials, like you, you won't get bored with how many different materials that you can cut with this project. Now for today's project, we're going to be making these little um, napkin ring holders. And I've got one here that is all set up. And I just put a little sprig from the, um, I went down the floral aisle, aisle, grabbed a little sprig, and then you have your napkin. What makes these fun is that you can do it one of two ways. One is just put this on the napkin, um, put your napkin through the hole here and add a person's name or add you know, some kind of quote if you're doing um, something with gratitude or you have maybe a family design or you could put a monogram on here. And then you can also add a little stand to it so it could stand as a place card setting for the for the for the table. So that's what we're going to work on today. And I have, I put two links. If you're working along with me, I put two links in the chat for you. If you click on those links, it will take you to a Dropbox where I have shared my files for this project. This is a project that I designed. It's not in the Glowforge catalog. It's my own design. So I thought it would be helpful to show you guys how to, um, upload a design. So you can find designs all over the place. Um, Etsy, other, other websites. I use a lot. Creative Fabrica is one of my favorite websites to find designs on. And I, you can use those for personal use. Um, and let's see what else was I going to say about that. I think that's it. <laughs> um, before I move into the software of Glowforge, if you have any questions, this is a good time to ask and I'm just gonna start sharing my screen so I can show you the software um, and how that's gonna work. So I just need a moment to transition over to that. So it really is a good opportunity if you have some questions to ask, please feel free. Let me just get that, make sure I've got that up right. Okay. Okay, so let's go to, okay. All right, I'm gonna share my screen now. We'll look, so if you had any questions, feel free, you don't, like this wasn't like a one and done. So if there, if questions pop up as you're, as you're watching, please do not hesitate to ask them. I am not a representative of Glowforge, so I don't know all the answers to the questions you might have, but I certainly can tell you um, where to find the answers. Maybe we can research them ourselves if we need to. Okay, so this is the um, Glowforge website, and I already have an account. So the first thing you'll do is set up is set up your account with the Glowforge website, and then when you're ready to make something, you hit the create icon, and this will take you to um, the Glowforge landing page page where you have projects that you've created or projects within um, their catalog that you can add to what they call your dashboard. Your dashboard is where your projects stay. So once you've created a project, it will stay on the dashboard. Um, so I, what I'm gonna do is take you over, let's see, am I sharing? If I go here, does that take you to my Dropbox kind of thing? Let me see. Yeah, it looks like it. Okay, good. I just want to show you, I have I have like a bazillion things, but here's um, the image for the Glowforge napkin ring. So you come into um, the Dropbox and you can click on a link and choose to download that link. So when you click on the image, you can download that image. So I'm going to download this one here and I want to make sure I noticed that it did not say... It should be for everybody, should be able to share. Yeah, okay, it's ready to share. All right, so when you click on that link, it will take you, um, it'll download your um, that image. So you just can go to the download file and you'll see your image there. Now what I have to do is I'll drag that onto my desktop so that I can add, quickly find it when I'm ready to upload it. So you might wanna start a folder on your desktop or just drag that 
to your desktop, whichever is easiest for you. Once you have the file selected, then you're going to go back to the Glowforge website. And here we're going to create a new design. So we're going to create a design from an upload file. So you select upload a file, and this will support um, SVG files, JPG files, and um, PNG files. The SVG files are really the um, files that you want to use because, um, there we go, let's add that file. The SVG files are will give you all the features of what you can create on the um, on the the website. <laughs> so you can score with an SVG file, you can engrave with an SVG file, and you can um, print with the SVG file, cut, basically cut. So here's the, um, here's our little acorn file here. And what you're looking at, what is behind the acorn image is actually the bed of the, um, the bed of the Glowforge. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna stop sharing here because I wanna show you, we're gonna put our material in the Glowforge and I'm gonna show you how to do that. So let me just do a quick stop share and we'll come back over to this camera. And I left, I've got wires all over and I left my um my board over here that I need to cut. So let me go grab that. Nope. So sorry. Okay. I thought I had lost it. Uh-oh. Maybe I did lose it. Um, sorry, guys. I just want to make sure I have the right sword here. There you put it over. In my enthusiasm, maybe I already brought it. I did bring it over. Okay, I did. <laughs> sorry. It's right under here. Okay. So you can do a lot of different materials. There are acrylic materials that you can cut with. Um, you have some different hardwood materials you can cut with, softwood materials you can cut with. I like to use also like the Make Market materials um, are great to cut with. They're a little bit lighter. You can also cut chipboard is a great thing to cut. So there's so many different um, types of material that you can cut with. So for our project today, I'm going to use the light basswood plywood. Now, I'm going to um, just insert it into the tray here. So we'll just pop this up. And I kind of like to have a piece of cardstock so I can see um, my design when I'm working on it. So I'm just gonna put this in here and you'll see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait until I can share my screen again and you'll see the software register that material. So let me share this. Okay, so when I close this, you'll see the camera will scan the bed and read that QR code on the bottom there. So it's thinking, You can, if you look at the right corner, there was like a little circle. Now I can just move my acorn and the little stand part around and cut that out. If I want to, they're grouped together, all these different layers are grouped together. If I want to take advantage of like this little space up here and move the holder piece, all you need to do is select ungroup. And then I'll select these two layers, the um, slot and the outside ring. We'll group those together so they move at the same rate. And then I can just move those over here and then I'll just pop my acorn a little bit closer to that pumpkin there and use that space to cut the acorn out. Once that's done, I just, once I have a position where I want it to be, I'll hit the print um, design there. And what it's gonna do, it's going to prepare the print and we'll just, I'm gonna stop share. It's gonna like scan and calibrate the machine. Let's see. You'll hear it like working away and thinking. Now, before we, um, before I put my, actually, yeah, this is a different part. <laughs> I'm gonna let this one cut. This will only take about five minutes to cut. And while it's cutting, um, we can work on another part of the project. So when it's ready to cut, I can watch it as it goes through on the, um, 
on my, let me share my screen again and you'll see it goes through the different steps here. So right now it's calibrating and verifying the alignment of the, of the setup. So it's just thinking about it and it's, it's moving around. And then once that's done, I think my little light will start flashing. It'll be ready to cut. And if at any point I, I decide, oh, that's not the space I want, that's not the right material I want, I can cancel the print and it will stop. And then I can put in different materials and get started that way. So it's just, it takes just a second to get it done. And the cool thing is if you have the, um, the side doors open, and you're using a bigger piece of wood, there are like little gatekeepers. I don't know what they call them, but they're like little gatekeepers that keep any of the um, debris and the, and the laser residue <clears throat> from coming out of the side. Okay, so it says this is gonna take four minutes and 45 seconds. So um, when I hit stop share, my light is flashing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click start to, um, start to do the laser cutting. Now, as I mentioned, I do have the filter. So if, I, if I'm working in my craft space and I don't have a way to filter out the window, then I would plug my, my white filter tube into the Glowforge filter and that would turn on and suck out any, um, any bad air. You definitely wanna have a personal filter system that connects to the Glowforge to, um, to filter the air out. So like mine right now, as I said, is filtering out my window so that it doesn't make a whole bunch of noise on it. Now, <clears throat> I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna go over to my overhead camera, Chanel, if that's okay. I don't think it'll go, um, I don't think it'll go, it won't go all the way over. Oh, maybe, there we go. So you can see the, the laser starting to cut and when it moves down here, um, you'll be able to see what it cut. So I can, that's the great thing about the top, the orange top is I can look through and see what my laser is doing and if it's doing what I want it to do, which it is. So that's great. Now, while that's cutting, let's talk a little bit about how we're gonna add the name or um, a, a saying on the back of it. So this material is the light basswood. So first of all, we're going to, um, it's masked. It has the ma like a masking tape on it. So after it's cut, you can remove the masking tape. Um, and if you, there is like a little bit of brown residue that will be on the side of the, um, the piece you just cut. You can clean that with soap and water, a little rag or like an alcohol wipe if you'd like to. But I've got this really nice um, unfinished wood here. And if you want to, you can paint it. I have these um, pens that I'm gonna show you how I can paint it with the pens. You can um, use acrylic paint with it if you'd like to. The pens are great. Like I did some blending here, did the brown on top down into the yellow. So I like the, the ability to blend with the pens. But you can do that same kind of look with your um, with your acrylic paint and a paintbrush. You'll get the same look. Um, you can choose to put a finish on your painted structure if you want to, but you don't have to. Okay, I'm going to show you guys. It's starting to cut over here. Can you see it? Let's turn the light on. That work does that help at all? So you can see it's now cutting out the shape of the acorn. We'll let that, I'll let you guys see how that cuts. All right, so I'm just going to remove the back the, on both sides. You want to move, remove your masking on both sides, the front and the back. The reason you have the masking, so the um. Glowforge proof grade material always has the masking on it. If I'm using a material that's not the Glowforge proof grade, I will add my own masking on it. So I have this roll, this six inch roll of masking tape. Um, and what the reason you would add that onto the wood 
is that it keeps the any burn marks from spreading out beyond your wood. So like if you didn't have it masked, you might get some burn marking on the edging with the cut. Um, but with it masked, you don't have to worry about that. It won't, it won't do that for you. So let me just grab my little tray here and I can just do my acorn. I'll do the base of it, a nice little yellow. And you can draw, like if you have, if you wanna draw your little acorn design on, on there, you can do that. But these little painty pens are fabulous for getting small areas. It dries practically right away. And I'm just gonna kind of push it up into here just a little bit. And I'll show you how I'm gonna fade that together. But this staining would also be really pretty to, to take like a wood stain and just wood stain this. So now you can see it's cutting out the center. That's so cool. Wait till you see it come out. Also, if you wanted to, this is a great project um, to give to kids, especially with these paint pens. These are Posca um, paint pens, but they're really easy to work with. You can see I'm almost like scribbling on here. So a kid could, you could give this um, to a project for kids as they're getting ready. Okay, so I've got that nice and painted in. You can go over it a little bit thicker if you want to. And again, you can add like a shellac or a Mod Podge finish to it if you wanted to. And I'm just gonna grab my brown and I will sort of blend this in down here like that. So you can just kind of blend that right into the yellow and I'll just take my finger and kind of push that down into the yellow while the yellow is still just a smidge bit damp and that blends it so nicely. I don't really worry about going with the direction of the wood. You certainly could if you wanted to. Um, if you wanted to work your painting that way, you could do that. This little pumpkin we did in an earlier class, this one is two layers and we did use um, a yummy acrylic on that design. So an acrylic paint as opposed to the marker. So the marker for like maybe a bigger area like this, it may be you know, it doesn't, it takes a little bit of, a little bit more coloring. I don't want to make you guys wait while I color this. So let me go ahead and I'm going to pause on this. We'll come back. I'll come back to this as we answer questions. And we'll just come back to this. But I just, it blends in so nicely. The woods absorb it really well. And it just kind of comes in like this. Now, I think I may have made a mistake on my cutting. All right, so it's cut. Um, should I go back to the front camera to take, no, I'll just take, let me just take it out here. So it's cut out. Now, when I remove my wood, my pieces are going to stay on the crumb tray. So if I pick up my wood, not, not always, there we go, some of them didn't, that little piece stayed on the crumb tray. So I just need to pick up that little piece and make sure that's out of the way because I don't want to, I don't want to leave that in there and have it get caught on something or not cut properly. So let's go ahead and grab these out so you can see how they cut. So pretty. So you can see there's like a little bit of like a burn around the edge, but with that masking on it, you won't get the burn on your, um, on your design. And if your design doesn't just loosely fall out, like it's cut through, I can see that it's cut through, but that masking tape is still there. You can just take a pair of scissors or I keep an X-Acto knife handy and I just will score that line there and just kind of like cut that a little bit so that it'll pop right out for me. Maybe I should just pull it out and then it would probably be easier to unmask <laughs> without that in there. There we go. And then my little piece here, we'll take that out. And now I have a whole nother set that I can make and work with. Okay, so that's, and then and then you paint it. And, but what about adding this fun little name? How do you do that? So let's talk about how to add text in the software. Let me pull this back up. Okay, we're gonna go back, oh no. I'll fix that. 
So let's go back into our software here. That fix it, Toby. All right, so many cameras. Um, let me come back into our software here and let's talk about how we can add a name onto the um, onto your piece. So I put the I put a just a white cardstock in there on the crumb tray, and I can move I can pan my design around, so you can kind of move around and get to an area you want to, and you can zoom in on it if you want to. So I'm just going to take this little guy here, and we're going to rotate him a little bit. Let's go back to my select tool. I'm going to grab this image, and I'm just going to rotate it a little bit like that. Now, if you don't want to cut an image, you can, um, when you go into enter settings, you can just ignore that image so you're not cutting it. I also will um, move it completely off frame so it's over there. But like for a little acorn, if you want to put a name on there, all you have to do in the software is go to this T. So we're going to say, okay, let's grab that T and add some text. So here's the text message right here. Got two layers by accident. Here's the text message right here. So for this one, let's do another name. So I go to the your text here and I type in somebody who's coming for Thanksgiving or you can, if you're doing this at a market, you can have all your little um, acorns cut out and then bring your Glowforge people to love to see the magic. And then you can cut out and customize names as you go along. In the typeface, there have, um, I don't know how many fonts are in here, but there are a lot of different fonts. And if it's a font that you use a lot, or if you're like in the middle of a project and you wanna say, oh yeah, I wanna remember I'm using that font. You just give it the little heart and then it will show up in your favorites. Let's see. So if I go to my favorites, oh. Oh, I need a normal weight. Okay, so, um, so let's find a font to do Let's do a big and bold font um, to write out this name, Adam. And you can see as you change the font, here's the name. And as I change the font here in the typeface, you'll see that the name also changes. So let me go for a kind of a drastic change here. There, I've got a different look. You can just keep choosing different, different looks there if you want. And then we'll just kind of go a little bit bigger and bring that into the acorn. Now I don't have to worry about centering or aligning because it's going to be cut and um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna place it on the finished acorn. I think I want a little smaller font. I don't remember which one I used before. Um, we can do anything. Let's look at great for lasers. You know. Maybe I used a retro. I think I use this one a lot. Okay, yeah, I think that must be it. I like this font. All right, so it's gonna be a small little cut, which is fine. Um, and I'm I'm just gonna cut that out of um, a medium. So I'm gonna, instead of this time, using a Glowforge um, approved, proof grade material, I'm using something else. I'm just using a piece of wood that I picked up at um, at Michael's. And it was, oh, I wish I could remember my settings. I think it was the medium basswood hardwood that I selected. So that's what I'm going to use to cut. Now, my little acorn, he's off to the side, but I'm going to, um, I'm going to go ahead and select ignore that. And for Adam, I, instead of engraving it, because I don't want to engrave it, I actually want to cut those pieces. So that's how it will cut for me, okay? So now it's pretty much ready to send over to the Glowforge. But what I want to show you is that um, before I send it over, I have changed the, I've done something to my wood and I'm going to show you, let's see. Okay, we're on the overhead. Sorry, Chanel. Chanel's fantastic. Chanel does the um, back end of all this. So if you guys have a question and I'm not answering it, she will get that question to me. Um, she's just so helpful. Okay, let me see if I can get that right. Okay, 
So what I want to show you is, as I mentioned, the Globe Forge, the, when you purchase the material at Michael's, it has that masking on it. And the masking is on both sides of the material. So for this material, though, um, I, I just picked up these a, a stack of these round little wood pieces in like that little um, dollar bin at the at the checkout of a of Michael's. And I was like, I wonder if, and so I brought it home and I tried it out. So when I did my first name, I used um, glue to put this in. And I you can use like super glue, Gorilla Glue. I use, I like 3600 3, glue. Um, so, but I had to like get my hand on all these little pieces and put them together. So then I learned about this 3M double-sided adhesive. So I'm gonna put that on the back side of this little circle. And the circle is just, it literally was just a little stack I found at Michael's. Um, and I'm just gonna take this and rub it down. I'm really excited for my Michaels to bring in all their um, kind of ornaments that you can decorate because I think there's gonna be so many that we can put in the glow forge. I just don't know what they are yet. Um, okay, so I've got that. Now this side is raw wood. It doesn't have anything on it. So I'll take that roll of masking tape, open that up and put that on the other side of the disc. And I'll just cut that off. Now, I you can cut around it. I'll show you my little trick. Hopefully it'll work for me. I don't know about any of you watching. Um, if you're a teacher or you know a teacher, my mom is a teacher and we used to go help her set up her classroom back in the day. And uh, that masking tape, those big rolls of masking tape that you always had to cut off the certain right amount of it and then wrap it around your finger to put things on the bulletin boards. Okay, so I just use a little wedge here. I wanna make sure I don't have any bubbles or anything in the wood so that it's gonna lay down nice and flat. And then I can just take my fingers and kind of tear this extra masking off the edge here. It's way easier to buy the material that already has the masking on it, but you know, we're DIYers and sometimes you wanna do it yourself. So you have that. So the veneer, the um, Glowforge proof grade veneer material has this adhesive on the back of it. That's what I was like, huh, let me see if I can do that. So now I've got this on the wood here. And I'm just going to go ahead and give my space, my designs an extra little push down. I'll go ahead and put this into the Glowforge. So I'll remove my piece of paper. And I'll put this in the glow forge. The reason I put the piece of paper in there is really because um, when I when I cut on the glow forge, um, or like I'm designing in the software, the honeycomb grid on the back does make it a little bit hard for me to see everything. So if I have that, um, if I have something that's there, like that's white, I can see things a little bit easier. So like if I put this up here, it's a little bit harder to see. So I just put it right here. Now you can position this anywhere you want. I can see where it is on the frame. And then I've got my material selected. Everything else is going to be ignored. So we're just going to cut out Adam. And I'll, I'll be honest with you guys, this is my first time trying the um, adhesive on the back. So I'm really hoping that it, it does the trick for us. And then while that's going to be printing, I can go ahead and finish painting at least the front of my little acorn here. So it's ready to, to have that design on it. This is the hardest part, it's the waiting and watching it cut. Now, the other, um, you know, we were I was talking about earlier about what type of laser this is and how maybe it compares to more the Glowforge Pro. The, this laser does take a bit longer to make the cuts. So, um, like I, I always look at how long it will take and the length of time is pretty accurate. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and stop share here. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit that, that go button and we can move my camera over so you can see both angles there. All right. Um, it, but it, the timing is very accurate. And 
the other day I was working on a project with a recipe and I just was like, oh, I got to head out the door. So I don't have, it was been like an hour and 15 minutes and I only had an hour. So I was like, well, I'll just wait until I have another chance to come back and, um, and work on that project before I finish it. Now, another really fun way to, to decorate these acorns would be to take some uh, decorated fall napkin and Mod Podge that onto the shape. Just use the shape and then Mod Podge that on. Also with these pumpkins, that would have been a really cute, you could just take the bump pumpkin shape and Mod Podge on a napkin or something like that, like a single ply napkin. I love that look. And you can add a little decoration onto your acorn if you want to. Like you can add, take some a little sprig of a pine cone and you can add that on here if you wanted to. Um, and you can be as fancy or as unfancy as you want to be. It's totally up to you. But I just, I love these little shapes. They're so fun to play with. And then for the base of it, you can, um, they take that off you. Yeah. For the basement, you can paint that as well. We did paint our bases on our, our pumpkins. Um, so that kind of turned out like that. So this is sort of the same idea as the pumpkin was in what we're making. Now I'll just go like this and put it on there like this. And then you can just glue it on like that. So the um the settings for the different materials is some is sometimes a trial and area error. <laughs> So I do try when I'm when I'm kind of playing around with it, I will um, find material that is um, I can you know get a lot of it or something like that. Like these circles was a great material just to kind of try and, and have fun with and play around with, just to see how it cut and everything. So um, you can definitely do that. The engraving is something else. Like I would I played around with the engraving to see how that would work. And that was a lot of fun. So here we go. I can see it's, it's almost done. It's making lots of nice cuts. All right. So I didn't see that anybody in the chat, um, maybe if you have a minute now, you wanna let me know, do you already own the Glowforge? Are you making things with it? Are you just interested in adding this to your um, craft space? The possibilities, if you are considering adding this to your craft space, really the possibilities are endless. And I'll, I'll show you a little, that recipe thing I was working on. Um, I, I got a little Lazy Susan recipe, a Lazy Susan pumpkin from a local store. And um, you could really use any shape. I'm working on another, kind of recipe project too. But the this little lazy Susan pumpkin, let me grab it here. Something like this. I put the recipe on, I engraved the recipe on the lazy Susan. And you can either use it, um, it's not, it's not um the lazy Susan itself, the wood is not food grade. So it really is just decoration. I did the engraving on this. Um, the the lazy Susan itself was like $3. And the engraving was, you know, of course, my time, but I was doing the math and trying to figure out, you know, how many of these would you need to sell to pay for a Glowforge? Um, and so if you think of it, if you're trying to like go like, oh, I want to get that, how do I justify it? That was one way um, I was thinking like, oh, if you had, uh, if you made this many of these, then you could pay for the Glowforge. Um, and if you think about like over time, how many of the different, um, you know, different things you could make and sell. It's really unlimited. Okay, now you do want to wait. That it'll usually give you like a cooling down, like let it cool down before you um, pull it out. And that's also like to get any if there's any smoke in there or anything like that. It's just to give it an extra chance to pull it out of the filter. So I probably should have waited an extra second. But look, it cut all the way through. So there is Adam's. Now I save, I save every little chip and piece of um, material so that I can use it later. But there's his name. And let's just grab my weeding tool. I'm gonna poke out the centers of his name here. Now I could um, paint this before putting it on. I probably would paint this before putting it on, but 
I don't want to run out of time. So I'm going to show you, we're going to put it on first. So I'm going to put it on first. Okay, what should I put it on first or should I paint it first? <laughs> Chanel, what do you think? It does dry pretty quickly. I just don't want to, I don't want it to like not dry. So um, well, it's up to you, but we, we have 15 minutes. So I think, I think you have plenty of time. Okay, we'll so we'll paint class. it first. All right, we'll paint it first. Some other material that I've cut using the Glowforge too um, is felt. Felt cuts really beautifully. And I have like this little felt leaf. I did not cut this on my Glowforge. Um, it's a really nice thick felt piece. I purchased this, but you could um, you could take felt and cut the felt on the Glowforge and create like a centerpiece for your Thanksgiving table. Um, uh, you can use the felt to create like a banner if you wanted to on the table, um, all kinds of things. One of the other great things that I've learned about the Glowforge is using, is cutting um, cardstock. It's really easy to cut cardstock on the Glowforge. And what I love about it, um, you can, you get really fine details on the, on the cutting of it. Let's see, let me grab my little plate here. You can get really, really fine details, like really fine details. And you don't have to worry about weeding it. Like when you remove it from the tray, all the little pieces um, come off. So you don't have to worry about taking it off of a mat or anything like that. It automatically will, it just falls off, which is great because, and then you can just vacuum up the little scraps that are in the crumb tray. So everything's kind of contained for you. Um, so that was like another nice little feature there. I liked, I liked having that. So I think like if you want to do some shadow boxes with um, like mandalas and use different colored cardstock, you can do that. It, I use the, um, I do use a pattern, like a, not pattern cardstock, but a textured cardstock is typically what I use that is um, 80 pound weight. And it has just cut so beautifully. Um, I've got a project in mind to do some engraving on cardstock. I haven't tried that yet, but I'm, that's on, in my mind to do. I think it's so fun. Okay, so these little, I'm just, I'm just painting this. That's it. I'm just putting my marker and I'm painting this. I'm going to let it dry for just a second because I'm so excited about that adhesive on the back. Now that one, this would then be, probably should have a separate bin so I can keep this one someplace else. I can even push that name closer to the edge here, or I could have done the name in the in an edge. You can um, engrave on, you know, I should probably show you guys, well, so we have time. Why don't I show you so you can see the difference? Like, okay, we cut that name out. Let me share my screen again. Because the, um, the difference between like the score and the engrave, it definitely is different. So let's pop this in there. Let's see. Okay, it's gonna scan it up for me. And this is also, I, you guys can see this community chat. This is great. If you have a question or you're trying to, like you need help with something, people in that community chat are so nice and they'll give you advice and tips and it really is helpful. Okay, so what if we did the top name here? Um, let's see, are these grouped together? These look like they're grouped together. Yes. So. Um, okay, paste as a new step. All right, let's learn something new, guys. So I do a lot of copy and paste uh, when I just did that one. If I, if you right click on um, the layer that you want to do, I'm going to um, copy this layer and then paste as a new step. So in the layers panel, you'll see it gives me a second layer of, of the name Adam. So the first name here, I can choose, I click on the name and I can choose to engrave this name. The second name, I'll click on that one and we'll choose to score that name. Now you can see on the screen here, the engraved name is filled in, the score name is an outline. So let's go ahead and do print. And we'll, it, it might take a little bit more time to do the, the engraving it definitely will take more time to do the engraving than the score i have tried to see if there's a way to make the score line thicker 
haven't figured that out yet. Um, you can do the power and the speed and the number of passes, but I haven't figured out how to do the score line thicker. That is, that is something I need to research on, how to do that. So my little, my little guy over here is thinking, it's calibrating, it's doing everything it needs to do. Now this one does not have my 3M adhesive on the back of it, but if you were making like coasters, if you wanted to use, oh, perfect. I think this will take us right to the end of class. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit my little light and we'll let that go. Okay, so while that's working, I'm gonna take the, my name, Adam, since it's dry and my little acorn here is dry. And now, instead of trying to get glue on all these really thin pieces and keep it all clean and neat, I'll just take my little weeding tool, get it started. I should start with my weeding tool here. Um, just keep in mind that this is really thin wood, so you don't want to pull too hard on it. But look, as I remove this 3M backing, the clear, it ha it's like a clear, uh, this tape, let me grab my roll again, I can find it. Do I have it? Oh, this tape here is a clear, double-sided adhesive. So as I pull off the paper backing, there's a clear adhesive that's left on the on the wood there. So as I turn that over and place that down, now I don't have to worry about um, any glue seeping out or looking funky or anything like that. That just goes right in there. And then I can just um, put it right in my folder. And now I have Adam's name. Now, if you wanted to, I, I kept these as separate pieces because I thought like if I were gifting them or if you are if you're have a little side hustle and you're taking these to a market, um, you can just box them like this, package it like this. If you wanted to take these to a market, you could do words that are not specific to a, a person's name, but you could just do thankful. Or if you were going to a market, you may want to go ahead and cut, use this, use like the 3M tape here and cut out a bunch of different uh, letters. And then you can either let people make them themselves. I probably wouldn't do that because other people might get them crooked. <laughs> I would even get them crooked, but you could make them and customize them on the spot, which I think that is just such a great thing. Um, you could also, you know, thinking about what you can do for the holidays, you could make a little tag design and you're gonna see when the embossing and the engraving is done, um, it'll it'll give you such a cool look on the embossing engraving. Like it just gives like such a neat look. Um, so you can you can do like tags and put somebody's name on it. So I don't know. I I always have my kids have um have tags with their names every year. We've done I've done all different kinds of things. So I think that would be really fun. You can even just do their name as a tag. It would be cute. We did a really cute card. Let me grab one other thing. Speaking of names, if you missed um, our keychain class, that was the, the class we did before. If you missed that class and you want to make tags, you could use the, the, the acrylic. This is two layers of the acrylic. And this could be a tag for a gift. Or this is the um, cherry veneer. And I just added like a little ribbon on there with some baubles. That would be a super cute, um, a name, like that could be in your place setting. Everyone gets their own keychain, or you could um, you could do this as a gift tag coming down the line. So lots of fun things you can do with that. Um, I'd love it if you guys have any questions, like either, I think they're pretty anonymous. So don't, don't be shy about asking me a question. Um, you're here to learn. So I, I just wanna encourage everyone to go ahead and pop in a question in the Q&A if you haven't. We have a couple minutes so you guys can hang out and see how our um, engraving finishes up. So here it is. I'll put my camera up over there so you can see. Look there, it's doing the engraving. So it just goes, the, the head goes back and forth and it's right in the center because that's where I put my um, wood. I probably should have 
maybe put the wood someplace else, but it just passes back and forth as it makes those passes, it engraves into the wood. Um, so it's really cool. And then what we can do is you can use your glue pens and um, color that in before you remove the masking. And it, it looks so cool when you do that. Let me grab another, I have another little thing I can share. So this was uh, this was one of my first projects I made. Oops, sorry, this was one of my first projects I made um, with my name, and it was it's out of just a black eco thin acrylic, the proof spray Glowforge eco thin acrylic, and I um, I left the masking on and was able to cut out or to paint where it scored, and then I peeled the masking off. What that did was allowed the color to sink in where I had scored, but not go into onto the other plastic. So if this, um, as this finishes, if we have time, we can kind of maybe try and show you that. I'm not sure 100% will have time. So now it's just doing the scoring. And as, so the difference between the engraving and the scoring, you can probably see the engraving filled in the name completely. It doesn't cut it out. Like I could add an offset cut line and cut that atom out if I wanted to. So you'd have the engraving and then the cutout, which that would be that would be adorable. Um, but yeah, so you have the the score lines there, and then you have the engraving lines. And this time I'm going to be a little bit patient. I'll share the um, I'll share my screen with you so you can see how the software does advise you to. Um, Hold tight for a minute. See, it says it's cooling down and you keep the lid closed for a moment. And this helps minimize your snow. Now I will say, after I've I've been crafting with the Glowforge, um, my hands do have like a little bit of a, of a burn odor to it, um, but that goes away. Okay, so while I'm just gonna let that cool down for another second, um, let's, let me stop share so you'll, you guys can see me take it out. The other Presley, I need a question should, for you. Yeah. Um, so you've mostly been working with wood today. What other materials could you use with the Glowforge? Um, specifically something like more porous like cork? And what materials would you not recommend using with the Glowforge? So you can definitely use cork. I would use cork um, as like to like score. Um, score or engrave on. I don't think I would, I guess it would depend on how thick the cork is, if you can cut it or not, but like you can definitely do like uh, cork coasters is really fun. Um, this There's slate, you could work with slate and engrave on the slate. S same with leather, like you could work with a leather material. Um, like I mentioned felt, I love working with the felt. And um, the you have your acrylics and your different woods that you can work with. Um, there are so many, so many different types of woods. And I think like with the Glowforge, it's really kind of an early stage. And it's still, it's like trial and error. It's kind of like, I go like, well, let me see. And I'll just, I'll just try it and see how it works out. Um, one thing that the diode, print, diode printer will not work with is clear acrylic and white acrylic. It's the way that, I, from my understanding, it's the way the laser goes into the acrylic. Um, the clear acrylic, it will just kind of spread out and melt the material rather than giving you like that nice clean cut. Um, you are limited by thickness. So like I, I was actually nervous about doing this um, little tray because it's like a, an inch, it was an inch thick. So I can show you when we pull this up, um, you can you if you put something in the Glowforge, the um, the laser head needs to be. I don't know if I can get it far enough so you can see. The laser head here needs to be able to uh, clear on top of what you're what you're working with. So what you can do is just remove the crumb tray. Do that with your fingers. So uh, my crumb tray probably is ready to be cleaned off. So I'll do that after the workshop. But I can now put this in the bottom 
and it gives me, um, if you can see here, it gives me like another half inch of clearance. So now my um, head can just slide right over that and it won't, um, it won't interfere with the design. That makes sense. So you, you are limited to the um, depth of the material that you can work with on something like this. Like it won't do round designs. Um, and by round, I mean, it won't do uh, like mugs or tumblers or something like that. Okay, so I have the, um, I have the um, masking tape on this. And before I remove it, I'm just gonna take a little damp cloth here. And this is just gonna remove any extra little burn that's on the top. See, it just kind of pulls that off. And then I can take one of my colors. Let's see what color. I'll just do the yellow. Well, do I want to do yellow? Ah, I can't decide. I guess I'll do green. Um, and you can just paint over, even you can paint over where the masking is and not worry about painting. I don't know if that's going to really show up there. I probably needed to pick a lighter color to get it to show up for you. So I'm not gonna go too far with that because I probably should do it with a lighter color. Let me just I'm gonna clear that off. So it's a little forgiving there. Let's pull that off there. Now, so I probably should use a lighter color on that engraving to get it to show up. Maybe like a white would look good. Um, so let's just clear, take the masking off here. You guys can see, and you can even, you know, uh, use your paint pen and do the outline if you wanted to. But I, it's also really pretty just with the wood and the engraving. So here we go. Now I think you can also paint your board. One thing I have not tried is painting my board. So if I wanted to have my background, say a nice blue and then have the engraving on the inside of that, that's something you could certainly do and give your color like a nice look there. And then you just use your little weeding tool here. You got our little inside pieces. And there we go. So I could have just taken my acorn and engraved a name on top of the acorn instead of cutting it out separate from that. It's kind of fun that way too. And then you just remove that masking tape and wherever you want to put your design, you're ready to go. If you want to make a keychain with it, if you want to make like earrings, if you want to, like I think this is really fun for um, school names and things like that is a great, is a great way to use that. All right. Well, Chanel, I think we are at the end of our time. Um, I want to thank everyone for joining me. I'm excited to see, let me turn that light up. I'm excited to see what you guys create. Uh, if you check out the Learn with Michael Instagram, you'll find other classes that are coming up. I have a really, I'm really excited about this workshop um, for the 12 days of card making. I am using my Glowforge to make um, this little thanks a latte card and the gift card just slides right in there. Let me just not do it backwards. <laughs> Your gift card will slide right in there. So this is the project we'll be making and sharing the file um, for on our um, 12 days of card making, our next Glowforge class. Please do feel free, like if you see a Glowforge class on the Learn with Michael's Instagram site, if you have more questions or any questions, you can always post them there and follow along with that um, with their Instagram so that you can see what classes are coming up. But thank you for joining me and I hope you guys enjoyed the workshop. <laughs>